Welcome to Dark Sorcery. This is Alfredo Martinez, and I have one of my admins here, Ikela Morningstar. And welcome to the second episode of Dreamcatchers. If you didn't catch our last one, basically what this is, is this is a short conversations between Ikela and I. Uh, we'll choose a different topic every, every week and kind of just bullshitting too. So last week we talked about intuition. Um, and this week will be intuition part two, meaning how do you respond to that intuition? Um, and, you know, how would you follow up with that? And, uh, I mean, now if you ask me, um, one thing that I, I would do, you know, is what's helped me is uh, just go ahead and ask Bill Yaw. I mean, get in contact with him. Uh, let him know your situation. And just speak with him honestly about it. He'll go ahead and give you the help you're, you need, you know, if you're willing to listen. So that's just one, that's one thing I would suggest. What about you, Michaela? Um, So for me, it's a little broader. Um, I think connecting with deities, demons, whatever angel, whatever you choose that you connect with. Um, I have different ways of doing it. Uh, I, for, for me, I use symbols. So depending on if I'm getting like a dream, a symbol, a thought, a voice, a feeling, or a vision, I'll ask for a symbol. Um, so like I might say, let's just say my symbol is a rose. So mm -hmm. I'll ask for a symbol of a rose to give me more information. So then I might see a rose on the TV or someone might send me a rose emoji followed by a picture that kind of like adds more pieces to the puzzle. Right. Um, and that's just kind of one thing I do, but it really, for me, honestly, it depends on whether I'm getting a dream, if I'm getting just a symbol or if I'm getting thoughts, voices, feelings, um, or visions mm -hmm. on how I'm going to go about doing that. You know, I, I like that answer. And it also ties in with what I just mentioned about how, you know, contacting deities for help is that they may even show you that if you tend to work with deities a lot. Um, I think that's interesting you mentioned that about dreams because, you know, the subconscious mind speaks in symbols. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that when they try to interpret dreams, especially people who are mundane or not spiritually minded. Um, but, yeah, I, I take dreams very seriously. Yeah. Yeah, for dreams, uh, I just want to say what I do or what I've noticed that works for me over the years is um, if I have a dream – I have to see how I'm feeling about the dream. Um, so I don't like react to it. Like as if I'm watching a movie and something scary happens, there's gotta be more to it. So I try to break it down to like what I'm really feeling about that. Um, uh, for instance, like uh, I kept having like a dream where I was like on stage singing or doing something like that. And, but then there was some scary stuff happening with my mouth being ripped open and, and just some weird other stuff. I can't remember all of it, but basically they wanted me to get over my fears and follow some things that I haven't been following. Um, and I, I knew that because I was able to piece the, the puzzle together and I had other dreams that were reoccurring with that, but not everything in the dream is real. Obviously my face is not going to get ripped open. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think dreams are really good. I've actually had dreams that actually do come true exactly the way they look, but not all dreams are like that. So I think it's really right. important to be mindful and, and just, I try to sit and meditate on it for a few days. And if it feels like something like, if you remember a dream to like down to the T, down to color, feelings, sensations like that, that's probably one of those dreams um, that you're getting for interpretation. Um, if you mm -hmm. have a hazy dream and you don't really remember, then it's probably not one that you need to even bother with. That's just my opinion. Right. And, you know, I, I think that it, it, you know, it depends on the individual, you know, obviously symbols aren't going to mean the same thing to everybody. Um, I love that you said that. Yeah. It's, it's because <laughs> the thing is that, you know, interpretation is subject is suggestive, it's subjective, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, you can't say, you can't buy a book and say, well, this means this for everybody. No, it doesn't right. because yeah. everybody's had different experiences with that object or person or whatever, whatever it is. Um, but what were, what were some other uh, methods that you used to, uh, as far as going after intuition? 
Yeah, it's um, funny because I just made a brief list of stuff that I wanted to talk about. And the next thing on my list right. was symbols and it says, I believe we all have our own interpretation. So like my symbol of a rose can mean something completely different to you. That's why it's like, you gotta be really careful too. Like when, if you're gonna be Googling like dream interpretation, there's a bunch of interpretations, but it's kind of like, uh, like with spirituality and stuff, you might take what you feel is good for you and, and throw out what's not. Cause I, I right. my own belief, I feel like we all have our own path and we take stuff from different areas. So I, I, I agree with you. And that's why I smiled when you said that symbols have their own different meaning for each person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And another thing that I would do is um, light some frankincense and, you know, if, meditate on, on a, a card like uh, the magician mm-hmm. or the hermit. Um, I think that as you, as you visualize yourself in the card walking around or just the correspondences that relate to the card that, um, that answers would begin to come to you, you know, just be, you know, get some rhythmic, rhythmic breathing going, uh, get that incense going, stare at the card, think about the card, everything about it. And answers will come to you that way. Also, that's worked for me. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, I just had a thought and it just like passed me right now. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, and the other part of interpretation or, you know, with intuition and stuff is sometimes, well, for me, and I don't know how many people get all this, but I get thoughts. And so it was really making me crazy because a lot of these thoughts were not my own. And so I've had to be really mindful. Like if I get a random thought, did I like consciously think of that or did it just hit me like that? And then, and then when I get the thought, I have to, you know, think about it. So it's taken a lot of practice. Um, you know, I have to question myself, is this my thought or is this spirits? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think, um, like if you sit down and really, uh, even through meditation, mindful meditation, where you're, you're observing your own thoughts, I think that can really be helpful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, discerning is, you do have to do discernment. Mm-hmm. Um, especially like if you're doing some spirit work, you know, you can get a, you can get a spirit coming through that will pretend to be that spirit that you're trying to contact, but it's not. Mm-hmm. You try to feed off your energy in that way. So yes, discernment is important. Um, uh, what was the other, what was another item that you had mentioned on that list? Um, so I, I did put voices and, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know other people's experiences for me. Um, when I do hear the voices are usually, usually nudging me to take action, some sort yeah. of action, uh, that I need to do. Um, and they don't come all the time, but I have a couple of techniques that I've utilized in order to tap into those voices. Um, it, so I want to say the first one's a little scary. Um, if you try it, you might have some crazy experiences and that's listening to pink noise. I've listened to pink noise in the daylight, like on a train and I've seen some images that were pretty gnarly. Um, mm. I've also listened to it in the dark, which didn't last very long because it's actually quite scary. Um, so right. it, I'm just going to forewarn you. I don't recommend listening to pink noise in the dark with, you know, just for yeah. yourself. Um, yeah. And uh, now what I do, like I leave my fan running on at night. Um, the yeah. sound of that noise, uh, I can start to tap in and hear it. Now, I don't know if this is going to work for anybody else. I'm just sharing with what works for me. Yeah. That's, uh, that's interesting. I've never tried that before. Yeah, I would be open to it. Crazy Keep noise, you, you know. Add a little something, something to it. You're gonna be tripping. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I'm keep tripping. it like so we don't have. You don't. You don't want to get the whole audience tripping balls. And be like, well, what the hell? <laughs> Try stuff on that channel. They start freaking me out. Yeah, that's why I'm warning you. Please. <laughs> no, I mean a lot not of use or drink your first time listening to Pink Noise. I did it completely sober, and it's taken many uh, times for me to. I mean, because it'll actually raise your heart rate. Um, that that's pretty because you start seeing stuff. I mean, and the stuff I was seeing was like, "Whoa, dude, this is what everyone's talking about." Like, you know what I mean? Like, whoa! Now I, yeah. I, I'm blowing this up because this is my experience. Like, I'm hoping you can have that experience and you can have that experience. But I'm uh, just, warning you: don't do it in the dark. Watch, there's gonna be m- many. They're like, I'm "Well, <laughs> you know, the the thing is, is that that kind of relates to people when they, you know, when they first encounter the occult general. I mean, you get the people who will approach the occult, have experiences, you know, that are similar like that and be like, well, it'll either freak them out 
they'll run the other way or run to religion yeah. or they'll say, I don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah. Or they'll just think it's, or if they don't have an open mind, they'll just think it's stupid and then try to have a scientific explanation for it. And then you'll get people who are interested and just want to keep going with it, you know? Yeah. But you get, you get a mixed bag. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if, we'll a warning for people uh, who want to go ahead and try that out. But I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty clever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm just telling you it is. It's, um, I even read a, like a study that they did on doing that where they actually cover their ears and their eyes. So they don't have the, the hearing sensory, uh, and the visual, uh, and there's like some science behind what it does. It taps into something else. So I'm telling you, like, this has been scientifically proven. I'm not saying that they said it was scary, but it yeah, definitely raises heart rate, yeah. blood pressure, and a bunch of other things. And the experiences they were happening. I read this after I had tried this. So I just found it interesting that I had come across that article. Yeah. It's synchronicity. Yeah. And, it, and you know, no matter what your spiritual path is, uh, you know, whether you're right hand path, left hand path, whatever you follow, um, you will find synchronicity. But the thing is, is that you have to pay attention to it because, you know, the spirit world will, will try to show you here and there. This is what I'm trying to say, you know, but if you're not paying attention to it, you know, they could say, well, I'm just wasting my time. He's not, he's not getting it. She's not getting it. You know, you have to have an open mind. You have to have your mind open. Yeah. So, and then spirit has a real funny way. Like if they really want you to get it, they'll knock you on your ass until you see it. So, yeah, that can happen too. Yeah, that's why when I'm getting when I'm getting like uh, like stuff happening where like I get a deep feeling they're trying to show me something, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Like I do, I do different things. Like I'll go to the river and scry on the river. Um, uh, and look at the clouds. Uh, well, I kind of had touched on this la last week, but I think it's important to be in tune with yourself and any interpretation. So like if you want to keep a log, a journal or a mental note, um, I don't know if you have time to write, but just kind of mm -hmm. analyzing your own self, the way you think, um, what your thoughts are, what are not your thoughts um, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, you know, doing tarot or doing, um, you know, uh, the pendulum or doing, you can do different things like that. But I try to, I recommend trying not to get too, um, don't depend on those too much, especially if you like, you really want to depend on yourself and tap into that intuition to like have that knowing without those tools. That's what you really want. And then every once in a while, if you feel the need to do tarot or Oracle or pendulum or whatever, yeah, it, you want to do scrying, that's good. But a lot of people get hooked on that and they don't really tap mm -hmm. into their own power. Yeah, I agree. A lot of, um, what I've noticed is that, um, over time you've been walking your path for so long, this, the gods will, will train you. The spirits will train you to be self-reliant. You know, they'll, they'll help you along the way, but you'll get to a point to where you'll know in your gut, you know, is this a message or is this not a message or whatever, you know, but then there are those times when you do have, when, you know, you do have to go result. You know, um, you have to go to those uh, divination or consulting a, a deity for help. Mm. But yeah, um, most times you will be able to be self-reliant, but it's not always it's not always necessary in all situations. Yeah. Would you agree with me? Yeah, no, I totally agree. And uh, mm -hmm. something else just came to me today um, for any like impasse that feel energy or pick up on people's energy. I'll, I want to give an example of how tuned in I've gotten and I've done this because of, if not I go crazy so I'm at work and the guy next to me comes in and he's super sick like you can just tell he's angry miserable and he starts crying I had a great day up until that point after that I was like really irritated like frustrated angry and I had to like take lunch to take a deep <laughs> breath and clear that shit out because if I wasn't self-aware I wouldn't have known it was him I would have just been going through all these emotions and I would have got angry that I was angry and I didn't know why I was angry so if you're like that and you're really sensitive to energy or you think you might be sensitive to energy, I think it's good yeah. to research empathy or being an empath uh, just because uh. some of us are really sensitive to energy and we pick up messages from that energy. So we might like get next to somebody, we have tap into their energy and we can know things about them. That goes back to intuition. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this, we could talk all day about this. Like, yeah. Then there's those people just, who, just goes who tend to have that, but they don't know about it. You know, they don't know that they're that way, but they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's why I was like, felt crazy all my life. And you know, at some point I struggled with drugs and you struggle with drugs and 
you know, if you don't know what it is, like you, know, you get misdiagnosed and all this and that, and really it's not what it seems. It seems well, see, a lot of a, a lot of times people think you know things are are wrong with them when really the root they'll go through medicine, they'll go through all these different forms of treatment when really all it is is their chakras need to be healed yeah. or their chakras. A lot of times if your chakra, if, if you have a, if your chakra in a certain area is either, uh, you know, not spinning right or it's just blocked, clear that up and you'll notice a, a change in your health. You'll notice a change in, you know, just the way you function. You know, it, maybe if you have, uh, you know, if you have a, you know, emotional problem, emotional problems, or you have problems, you know, maybe you could check your, you know, your, check your, your, you know, chakra, you know, by your stomach, you know, envision yellow, or if you have problems, you know, speaking up, you can try to clear up your, your throat chakra. Mm -hmm. Just imagine blue, color blue right here, and imagine that, healing, you know, and, you know, sometime in the future, I, I am going to come out with a, a, a chakra course on, mm -hmm. I will teach you how, teach you how to uh, go through your different chakras, heal them, open them up, and get them going. But yeah, um, I've noticed that a lot of times people realize that that's that that's the root cause, and it, that may even have tie in with having to not receiving messages from the spirit world that they're trying to send you because right. you need your chakra work done. That's uh, that's the base for a lot of spiritual problems. Would you agree? Yeah, no, I do. And it goes so deep because you can be getting it like, this is a little imbalanced because this happened. We weren't focused mm -hmm. on that. We overlooked that. And it, it's just like, uh, honestly, it's like a spider web. And sometimes it can yeah. be frustrating because sometimes <sighs> you have to endure some things before you can get to that end result. And sometimes we get impatient. And I know I've jumped down several rabbit holes to try to come to the solution. The spirit's like, oh no, you gotta wait. Yeah. You know it what is, I mean? You know, you know well, well, crazy after rabbit hole after rabbit hole. Yeah, and w what can cause chaos is when people try to open up all their chakras at once. You know, like I, you only people don't understand that you only need to open up certain ones for certain things. Like, take for instance, if you want to speak your heart, all you have to do is open up your heart chakra and your throat chakra. Don't bother opening up any others because that's just going to cause confusion. Yeah. And then when you're done with them, you know, well, I'll explain more to do more with that when I when we speak on chakras. But, um, but yeah, that's, uh, I, I'm glad we uh, touched on this topic because I think it's important for people who are, you know, starting out on their path or for those people who are, you know, advanced and kind of just, you know, there's a point, there are times when you get confused on your path. You yeah. Know, or you happens. stray away or you forget about certain things that I do it. We're all guilty of it. It happens. You know, where we, you know, stop doing some things that we need to. And then you hear somebody talk about it. You're like, I really need, that was like a sign for me to refocus on this area or that area. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that's, that's awesome. And I'm just curious too, like uh, anybody that's viewing this, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, like if you can just comment below um, and that'll kind of help us um, like, so that we know what show, like how we're going to coordinate the next show or how we yeah. Because we do this for you guys, so mm -hmm. uh, we want to hear feedback from you if you have questions or ideas or anything like that. Yeah, even even if it's even if it's ideas for topics that you would want to see, you know, yeah. maybe we'll take one of those topics and and consider it and say, okay, well, let's do it. Let's do it for this week or that week. Or if you have any questions on what we've been speaking on, you know, how how would we be of assistance to you? You know, just go ahead and and comment on that. Awesome. Well. Yeah, well, uh, I think we, uh, I think we had a pretty, uh, pretty well-rounded discussion today. Yeah, I thought um, it was good, and I thought your ideas yeah. and your thoughts on it was great. And uh, speaking of chakras, I'd like to hear more, just because I likewise, I, you know, that could be something that we could talk on. Today. In fact, why don't we make that next week's topic is on chakras? Okay. 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 So I next, think next, that's great. next week, I, I got a good feeling about that because yeah, <laughs> so do I. So yeah. do I. I think that's going to be a very good discussion. And so, um, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for watching Dark Sorcery. Thank you for watching Dreamcatchers. This is our second episode. This is Alfredo Martinez, Annie Caleb Morningstar. See you next week. Dark blessing.